left off. Uh, Karen Grimm. Again, this is a safe trail, so please if you have to do. Yeah, I'd like to talk to you all about this. Can I ask if I be allowed to give my statement and then talk to the As long as it doesn't take long. I, I, I will confine it to my last time. Okay. My name is Karen Garen, not Grimm. Okay, I'm sorry. And I'm a wildlife biologist. And I'm a part-time teacher, uh, professor at, uh, at Santa Fe College. And I currently reside in Gainesville, Florida. But I've also lived in Miami. I've lived in Jacksonville. I've lived in Lake City. And I've lived in Houston Heights. And um, I'm a, uh, a member of the Squad of St. John's Sierra Club. And I'll let it go to the ground street. I, I believe in the uh, sanctity and of all life on the planet and interconnectedness of life with the environment. And uh, I'm also a people hugger. And I believe that physical contact is, is one way of really giving and sharing that, that energy, that universal energy that we all have. And, um, and I'm, I'm real pleased with the energy in this room, and I think we've got a lot of real knowledgeable people here that feel very passionately on, on many of the issues. Um, and we're all made of stardust. Um, some of you guys may know my husband, Rob Zierin. He and his partner, uh, Pete Wallace, are environmental consultants, and they've, they've worked with the district, uh, this district and other districts. That, all over the state of Florida, and I've accompanied them as their field technician biologist on many projects. And one project we had was with the Tampa Bay Water Authority, where um, they were researching the demise of the uh, uh, cypress stones there. They've overdrawn uh, the, the water resources to the extent where they're having saltwater intrusion, and that's been documented along with the uh, Gulf coast where the palm trees are dying. Um, and also the cypress stones were, were falling in. And that's, that's a real sad thing to see. So they're talking about augmenting those, and this was back in the, in the 90s, with um, true aquifer discharge and pumping. And I see that some of the projects that, that you guys have planned here are talking about augmenting existing um, spring sheds and, and um, water basins. And I'd like to address some of those issues later, but I can do that in, in a, uh, an email later on. Uh, another uh, project that, uh, um, um, well, anyhow, I've been uh, paring down on my material <coughs> possessions. I've gotten to that point in life where, um, and one of the things, the books I came across is the mitigation and restoration of the Mississippi, um, river, upper Mississippi river system. And it was put out by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Department in 1982. And just reading through the table of contents was very depressing. Um, Nine-tenths of this book put out by the Fish and Wildlife <coughs> is all dealing with engineering problems <coughs> on the Mississippi River, maintenance of navigation. Um, the only time they got to any of the natural systems, uh, wetlands and marshes, was as providing their support <coughs> for game fish. And, and, um, and then uh, everything in there is manipulated, right down to the game birds. And a lot of our attitudes have changed since then, but still humans have a tendency to over-engineer things. And um, examples of that are the, the um, what's happening down in South Florida now. Everything, all the water system down there in Okeechobee, um, Cassini River was turned into a big canal, and dumping nutrients in there that the lake system isn't designed to hold, and, and it's been compounded and turned into a big septic tank, and the discharge is going to the Atlantic Ocean and causing incalculable differences. Um, the um, project of the Sable Trail pipeline is being promoted by a company that does not have Florida's best interests in mind. Do not believe these people. Do not believe their environmental impact statements. 
They're salesmen. They are um, investing in fossil fuels is beating a dead horse. 20 years from now, um, y'all are going to have to address overconsumption issues. You are going to have to put moratoriums on consumption. You're going to have to do better jobs of monitoring withdrawal. And um, the, the, the fuels that are going, coming, that are planned to go down this projected pipeline are contributing to the environmental destruction and, and health consequences of people in, in northern Appalachia. And the fuels that are coming through here are not an investment in our own infrastructure. We're not using these fields, the fuels to produce our own energy. It's going to ports. It's 98% of it is slotted for export. And um, so y'all need to step up to the plate and give it your best bet. You need to fight the legislature and get that Amendment 1 funding back. You need to, to um, so, uh, too much of that is going to pay salaries and stuff. You need that need, money needs to be coming towards the districts. You guys need to be um, uh, listening to your own scientists and and demanding that get the best scientific information you can. The EPA, for some reason, the federal EPA, for some reason, they they had a lot of concerns, and then after a closed door meeting with disabled trace trail people, they, they um, said that their concerns had been answered and they, they signed off on it. The Army Corps of Engineers hasn't put its own sufficient studies into it. Do not trust the EISs that these, these people are giving you. Do not trust what their geologists say. Listen to the, the, there's half a dozen other geologists that are telling you it's a bad idea. And, um, and it's, if, if they really wanted to be above board of this, if they really wanted to have government in the sunshine, if they were really proud of the contribution they're making to economies and they wanted to minimize the environmental impact, they would place this thing down the interstate highways instead of put through some of the, the most sensitive, delicate, untrammeled wilderness in Florida. And it would be above ground. It wouldn't be in a nine foot deep trench. It would be above ground where it can be monitored. So what you guys can do is fight the Army Corps of Engineers for the permitting of the river and waterways process. Do not allow the Army Corps of Engineers to, to roughshod over you. Get up there. In 20 years, you guys are, are at the crux now. 20 years from now, and, and, and when this technology is, is all obsolete. They're going to abandon this infrastructure. They're going to abandon these compressor stations. They're going to abandon the pipes. And there's going to be res residual pollutants in there. And it's, you guys just, you know what the right thing is. You know in your gut, in your heart, what we need to do. And it's not allow them to drill under the rivers and through our aquifer system. And the aquifer system monitoring is not an exact science. We don't know how long it takes for recharge. We don't know the, the water levels in there. We can monitor ground levels, and we can do dye trace studies that show you know, retention <coughs> basin from Itch um, the headwaters up down to the springs, as we know it's like a couple of weeks there. But we don't know if that water down there is 10 years old, or 100 years old, or 1,000 years old. And every single portion of the aquifer is different. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry, I forgot you. We're going to break just a minute. From, we've got a bunch of new employees here that we need to uh, let go back to work. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mr. Chairman, I first would like to introduce Andre 